When Elvis is shown in a way that connects him to Jesus, it's not the wild and crazy Elvis from his early days that's portrayed. Instead, it's the more respectable and calm Elvis from his later years. Similarly, the Jesus depicted is not the bold and radical figure who challenged the wealthy and powerful. It's a softer, more gentle version of Jesus, often shown in a peaceful and heavenly environment. The connection between Elvis and Jesus is interesting. Even fans who don't speak English are deeply moved by Elvis's voice. For many, hearing his voice for the first time is like having a spiritual experience. They feel touched by something greater than themselves. After hearing his voice, fans often search for pictures of Elvis to see what he looks like. They're never disappointed. Some people say they fall in love with Elvis as soon as they see his picture. Minister Anna of the Presbyterian Church of Australia says that Elvis's voice was very special and unique. He was able to connect with his audience in a strong way, especially when he sang spiritual songs. Many fans have felt a deep connection to him, and some have even found a stronger sense of spirituality or connected to Christianity through his music. Before Elvis became famous for his spiritual music, his friends noticed something special about him. When Joan Buchanan West met Elvis in 1953, she thought he was different from others. She felt a kind of magic around him, even when he didn't say or do anything. This magic is still felt at Graceland, the place Elvis lived, and it draws people to it. This is one reason why people like to visit places that are connected to someone famous or special, a tradition called pilgrimage. In the past, people who could afford it were encouraged to make several long trips to special places. Some of these places were Canterbury, Rome, and Jerusalem, which are all important to Christians. Today, fans of Elvis Presley also have many places to visit. After seeing Graceland, Tupelo, and Las Vegas, they might want to go to Jerusalem. There, they can visit Christian holy sites and also find a special Elvis spot. On the road between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, there is a large statue of Elvis and an Elvis-themed inn called Abu Ghosh. Some fans have noticed that a line on a map from the Mount of Olives, where Jesus went up to heaven to Abu Ghosh passes through the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where Jesus died and came back to life. A special trip to the Holy Land has been planned for Elvis fans. The 10-day trip costs $3,000 and starts with a flight from New York. On the trip, fans can follow in the footsteps of Jesus and learn about the spiritual side of Elvis. They will visit the Sea of Galilee by boat, float in the Dead Sea, and see the city of Jerusalem from a nearby mountain and while walking through the Old Town. The trip includes a special baptism ceremony in the Jordan River for an extra fee. After the baptism, participants will receive a robe and a certificate. Some famous musicians have inspired extreme devotion from their fans. Bob Marley's birthday, February 6th, is a special day for Rastafarians who gather to celebrate his life with music and festivities near his grave in Jamaica. Similarly, fans of Jim Morrison visit his grave in a Paris cemetery, leaving messages and offerings. However, some of these fans have a darker approach, and there have been reports of occult practices, Satan worship, and other disturbing activities near the grave. Despite this devotion, none of these musicians are seen as Christ-like figures, except possibly for Michael Jackson. There are many digital images of Michael Jackson that show him in a spiritual light. Some pictures show him in clouds, in the arms of Jesus, or with a halo like an angel. However, these images are not as common as similar ones of Elvis Presley. One reason for this might be that Michael Jackson wasn't as interested in gospel music as Elvis was. Michael grew up in a different church, the Jehovah's Witnesses, which is less energetic and lively than the church Elvis attended. Throughout his life, Michael Jackson showed interest in spiritual matters, but it's not clear what he believed in at the end of his life. Was he a Christian? Had he converted to Islam like his brother? Or did his childhood faith still influence him? Michael Jackson's fans haven't created a special kind of worship around him like they have with Elvis. Unlike Elvis's famous home, Graceland, Michael Jackson doesn't have a special place where fans go to visit. The stories about him aren't yet as legendary as those about Elvis, but that might change over time. After Michael Jackson died, his famous home, Neverland, fell into disrepair. His daughter Paris once suggested turning it into a place for sick children to have fun. 
However, it was renovated and put up for sale in 2015 with a new name, Sycamore Valley Ranch. The idea that Elvis is like Jesus is now well known, but it's hard to say how long it will last. It might depend on how well people know about Jesus. In the UK, fewer and fewer people know about Christianity. Not as many people go to church and Christian ideas and stories are not as popular as they used to be. This is also happening in other European countries and the US. If people don't learn about Christianity when they're growing up, they might not think of Elvis as being like Jesus. But as one writer said, when people stop believing in God, they might start believing in anything else. So as Christianity becomes less popular, it's possible that a strange kind of Elvis worship might take its place. It's only been 40 years since Elvis died, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Some people have compared Jesus to Elvis in a way that was not respectful or clear, and later regretted it. Louis Ludwig is an example. He wrote a book in 1995 called The Gospel of Elvises that was meant to be a humorous and imaginative story. The book was written in a style similar to the Bible, but with a playful tone. It told the story of Elvis's life, exaggerating his success and fame to make him seem like a king. Ludwig did not intend to be serious or offending, but rather to poke fun at people who take Elvis's fame too seriously. The book was organized like the Bible with chapters and verses. Small notes in italics were printed in the margins to make it look like a study Bible. The characters and places in the book were based on real people and places from Elvis's life, but were given new names. For example, Elvis's manager, Colonel Parker, was called the Snake, and his wife, Priscilla, was called the Virgin. The city of Las Vegas was renamed Babylon. The book story was about Elvis, who was called the King. One of the verses, called Golgotha, tells the story of the Virgin visiting the King and asking him to leave with her. The King says goodbye to the Virgin and sends her away. A note explains that this is about Elvis and Priscilla's divorce. Ludwig surprised everyone by criticizing his own book about Elvis during Elvis Week in 1997. He told his publishers to stop selling the book, saying it was a joke that had gone too far. He didn't want to make money from Elvis's memory anymore. Ludwig said Elvis wasn't a hero or a role model. He was a good singer, but his music and movies weren't that great. Ludwig also made fun of Elvis's fashion sense and how he spent his money. He asked why people still think so highly of Elvis, considering all his flaws. Ludwig pointed out that Elvis was naive about business, had personal problems, and struggled with addiction. He wondered if people were so desperate for a hero that they were willing to idolize someone with so many problems. Ludwig, a music producer and publisher, just wanted the music industry to focus on new artists instead of Elvis. He thought it was time to move on from Elvis's legacy. It's unclear if the change of heart was real or a clever trick to get attention for the book. Either way, it was an impressive move. Karen Armstrong, a writer and theologian, described why Elvis is so special to many people. She said that people are using big, meaningful words to explain how Elvis has touched their hearts and souls, just like they do with Jesus and Muhammad. Some people think this is a weird idea, but to others, Elvis is a kind of sacred figure. On the other hand, some people think that the idea of Elvis being like Jesus is just a marketing trick. They believe that smart advertisers created this idea to sell more Elvis products. John Windsor, a journalist, said that this idea didn't just happen naturally, it was carefully planned. Who is behind the idea of making Elvis as iconic as Jesus? The Elvis Jesus clothing company seems to be following a trend rather than starting one. The idea of comparing Elvis to Jesus actually started before the company that handles Elvis's business affairs was created. Although this company is focused on making money, it tries to do so in a way that respects Elvis's legacy and doesn't offend his Christian fans. While the company has approved some questionable projects, it avoids doing anything that would alienate or upset Elvis's traditional fans, as that would be bad for business. Some fans worried that the company would be controlled by the Church of Scientology. This was because Lisa Marie had shown interest in Scientology, like some other famous Americans. However, there was no truth to the rumors that the church would take over the company. It was just fans' imagination and speculation. Elvis fans are drawn to thinking about him in religious terms, but there isn't a secret organization behind this movement. It seems to be a natural and genuine phenomenon. 
However, the enduring popularity of Elvis can't be explained by just looking at it through a religious lens. Elvis was born and raised in a country that values free enterprise and making money. He grew up poor and knew the importance of earning a living. He and his family valued financial security and the status that came with it. His manager, Colonel Tom Parker, saw him as a product to be sold for profit. Today, the company that manages Elvis's estate, Elvis Presley Enterprises, EPE, doesn't worry about the spiritual side of Elvis's popularity as long as it doesn't affect their profits. Although it wasn't a planned marketing strategy, EPE has successfully harnessed the spiritual aspect of Elvis's appeal to make money. They don't need to understand why fans connect with Elvis on a spiritual level. They just need to keep track of the money coming in. The people in charge of Elvis's finances can focus on the numbers without worrying about the deeper meaning behind Elvis's enduring popularity. In the United States, many people don't see a conflict between capitalism and religion. In fact, some churches teach that being a good Christian can lead to success in this life and happiness in the afterlife. Elvis Presley is a famous example of how someone can be both a cultural icon and a brand. A sociologist named Professor Mark Gottdiener has called the late Elvis the other Jesus. He doesn't mean that Elvis was like Jesus, but rather that he has taken on a similar kind of importance in American culture. The idea of dead Elvises as a cultural icon is a powerful way for people to express themselves and feel free from the rules of traditional religions. By embracing dead Elvis, people can celebrate popular culture, secular ideas, and the things they're passionate about without feeling restricted by traditional values. This phenomenon is especially liberating because it combines elements of popular culture, sexuality, racial integration, and Southern American culture in a way that's unique and empowering. Elvis fans have the freedom to create their own ways of showing devotion to him without being bound by traditional rules or teachings. They can also easily incorporate their love for Elvis into their daily lives. However, this idea overlooks three important aspects of the Elvis phenomenon. Firstly, Elvis has fans all around the world, many of whom are not interested in Southern culture except for its connection to Elvis. Secondly, the deep spiritual and religious feelings that many people have towards Elvis are ignored. Some fans even see Elvis as a kind of messiah figure with supernatural qualities. Lastly, the idea doesn't consider how people often protect and defend the memory and image of someone they deeply admire. Just like how people of certain religions protect the name and reputation of their prophets, Elvis fans feel strongly about defending their hero's image. In fact, it's one thing that all Elvis fans agree on. They want to protect Elvis's name and image from harm. Many Elvis fans believe it's their job to protect his image and reputation from harm. They want to keep him in a good light and avoid anything that might make him look bad. This is similar to how some people feel about their religion. They get defensive when someone criticizes their beliefs. Some Elvis fans don't like it when people make fun of him or portray him in a negative way. They even get upset when someone mentions things that Elvis did that might not be so great, like eating too much or taking pills. To these fans, these things are not true and are almost like saying something bad about a sacred person. You can see this on the internet, where some Elvis fan sites have warnings that say they will delete any comments that are mean or untrue about Elvis. There's a lot of information available about Elvis's life, which shows that he wasn't always faithful to his wife and struggled with addiction to prescription medication. He also had a fondness for guns. Despite this, some of his fans and supporters prefer to ignore these facts. These aspects of his life don't change the good things he did and the kind, spiritual person he was. However, they are still a part of his story. There are two groups of people with different opinions about Elvis's image and reputation. This division is similar to the contradictions in Elvis's own life and personality. This kind of contrast is also seen in many organized religions where people focus on the positive aspects and ignore the negative or disturbing parts. After Elvis died, his fans were in a situation similar to that of early Christians. When Jesus was alive, his followers didn't write down his life and teachings until about 35 years later. By that time, many of Jesus' closest friends and followers had already passed away. Those who were still alive to tell the stories had mostly heard them from others, and they had to figure out the meaning of Jesus' message on their own. The similar for Elvis fans. 
now that he's gone, they have to interpret what he meant to the world without being able to ask him directly. In 2012, fans celebrated the 35th anniversary of Elvis's death. This was a significant milestone because there were still people alive who knew Elvis personally and remembered him well. However, as time passed, the number of people who knew him was decreasing. The stories they told about Elvis had been repeated so many times that they had become more like legends than actual memories. People who didn't know Elvis personally relied on these eyewitnesses to learn about him. At big Elvis events, fans loved to hear from people who worked with Elvis or were close to him, and they would often ask them questions about their experiences. If we can compare the early Christians to the first fans of Elvis Presley, we might note some similarities. Just as the Roman Empire eventually supported and protected Christianity, Elvis Presley Enterprises took a similar path with Elvis fans. At first, the people running Graceland were wary of anything they couldn't control, but eventually they began to endorse things like tribute artists that they had previously tried to stop. This change of heart is similar to what happened with the Roman Emperor Constantine in the 4th century. After years of persecution, Constantine made Christianity the state religion, giving it a structure and protection that allowed it to grow. Without this support, Christianity might have disappeared, just like many other ancient religions. The same thing happened with Elvis. As fans were discovering their own way to experience Elvis, the estate was taking care of the business side of things. If they hadn't promoted Elvis, kept Graceland open, and allowed the production of Elvis merchandise, it's unlikely that so many people would still be fans today. New generations of fans might not have discovered Elvis without the estate's efforts. People are naturally curious about the meaning of life, and many seek answers to life's big questions. Rituals and ceremonies are also an important part of human experience. Throughout history, many religions have emerged, but most have eventually disappeared. However, some have survived because they had a strong organization behind them. This organization, often with its own rules and leadership, has helped these religions endure. In a similar way, Elvis Presley Enterprises, EPE, and other companies that profit from Elvis's image provide a framework that supports the spiritual connection Elvis fans have with him. While these companies aren't interested in the religious aspects of Elvis fandom, they inadvertently help it thrive. This relationship is similar to that between the official Catholic Church and its more traditional grassroots followers. Just as these followers have their own unique practices and beliefs within the larger structure of the church, Elvis fans have their own spiritual connection to Elvis that exists alongside the more commercial aspects of his legacy. The Christian Church's history, especially during the Middle Ages, shows how it became more focused on power and wealth. Its leaders and structure moved away from the original values and spirit of its founder and the everyday faith of its members. Something similar is happening with the people who own the rights to Elvis's image. They are now more interested in making money than in honoring the spirit of Elvis. His image is being sold to the highest bidder, which is taking away from its original meaning. As writer Erica Doss points out, the fact that people want to control how Elvis's image is used shows how popular and profitable it still is. However, this also risks losing the special meaning that Elvis's fans have given to his image through their own traditions and behaviors. Despite what's happening in the business world, Elvis's fans continue to create their own idea of who Elvis was, and they're doing it in a way that's unique and meaningful to them. This has resulted in a kind of unofficial, fan-made version of Elvis that has many characteristics of a religious movement.